the solar calendar. So our one festival, Makar Sankayanti, is according to the solar calendar. Otherwise, all festivals are by lunar calendar. You have to see the position of the moon. Two prominent festivals are Dipavali and Holi. Dipavali coincides with new moon, dark night when you cannot see moon. Holi coincides with full moon, Purnima. Isn't it? And what is the importance of these two festivals? That is the harvest season. In the Pauli, the harvest number one, which is very common everywhere. Why is it common? Because it is preceding this harvest. If there is rain, Every farmer's field automatically gets irrigated naturally by abundance of rainwater. The second festival is with the second harvest. This is not rainy season, so this is not that common. First harvest in India is called Hajif. Second is called as Rabi. These are the names. So the first harvest with Diwali, that has more, many farmers have paddy grown, what is becoming rice. What is the difference between paddy and rice? If rice has a small covering, thin, thin sheath, Brown color, that is called paddy, isn't it? And when that is wiped out by thrashing or by machines nowadays, then you get white rice. Paddy needs a lot of water. So the Dipavali harvest has more paddy, that means rice grown. While the second harvest has more wheat grown, isn't it? So these are some aspects you will learn when you grow up. But that we have seen, even when we were all homebound, locked down due to this COVID-19 in the years 2020 and 2021, we couldn't go out. But what was most important that the government allowed to go out, allowed us to go out to buy groceries, is it not? So food is most important for our survival. And where does food come from? It comes from farmer's field when the harvest is ready. So these two harvests have very important great important, most important thing for entire humankind, is it not? Because we depend, our survival depends on food. So that's why these two harvests are very important and these two festivals are important. So the holy originates from time immemorial, from very beginning, the society, communities would be celebrating arrival of the harvest. Everybody is happy. They do all sorts of things for celebration, dance, etc., whatever you can think of. But there is another aspect. That is what is great about Vedic culture. The harvest comes, they thought, they should not eat alone, you know. Even in your backyard, if you get a fruit, your mother will say, the first piece we don't eat ourselves. 
we give it to somebody, maybe to a teacher, to a senior citizen, to a neighbor, to somebody with a sense of gratitude, is it not? So that's what our rishis found out a mechanism, how to give it to others. So what did they do? <laughs> they have a fire and they put the newly arrived food grain into the fire. It looks senseless or even nonsense, but it is not that. Because fire, what is called Agni, disintegrates its molecules, transform the rice and wheat, which is in solid phase, into gaseous phase. Is it not? Sometimes you get a smell from your kitchen, isn't it? Why is the smell? Because the food that is cooking, which is generally is in solid or liquid phase, is evaporating, is becoming vapor. And when it is vapor, it comes into your nostrils and you say, I get the smell. So the fire, whereas in the kitchen, you don't put food directly into the flame. There is a vessel. But in Agni Hotha, we put it directly into the fire. That disintegrates the food grain and then it mixes with the air. It goes into the nostrils of every human being. There is no discrimination. And not only human beings, even animals, birds, etc. So this is the origin of our two festivals, Dipavali and Holi, with the arrival of the harvest, and they do it what they call as now Sashyasti Yajya. Now means new, Sashya means food grain, and that way we thanked that Supreme Mother and Father who gives us everything. One would say that food is grown by the earth. But how is it grown? Because of the sunlight. And who has made the earth and the sun? That supreme being Ishwa, is it not? This is all his design. And the earth is moving around the sun. And what did he do? He made the earth, if it is like a spherical ball, the ball is slant by 22 and a half degree, you know. Because of that slant, we have seasons in a year. How is one year? In one year, the earth completes one evolution around the sun. But suppose the earth was just, there was no slant, then every day and night would be alike in every patch of the earth. There will be no seasonal variations. But this slight slant, 22 and a half degree, now upper one part of the earth, the upper northern hemisphere, the lower part, southern hemisphere. Now the northern hemisphere is having winter. Southern Hemisphere is having its summer. But we are, that is another beautiful aspect why we welcome these two festivals because they give transition in the season. Now winter is moving away and we are almost entering into the spring weather, which everybody loves, is it not? And in the spring and winter, you are afraid of water. Nobody likes to touch water unless it is warm water. Is it not? But now in the spring, even children love water. And that's why they say, you play with water, even colored waters in Holi. 
So, you know, these are beautiful things. Vedic is, is coined in ancient times, and these things, traditions, are coming to us year after year, generations after generation. So, thank you very much. This was some brief remarks. Acharyaji, Acharyaji, Holika, Holak, Upar bhi thoda Prakash Dhavi. Yeah, there is a, we just talked about the food grain and there is a covering about this. There is another food grain which is called chana. That is not so common in America. But in Indian grocery stores, you will get chana. Out of that is chana dal. And if you grind chana dal, you get besan. Is it not? And out of besan, you get pakodi. <laughs> so these are so many things Ishwar has given to us. And our Ishis have found out different kind of methods. So chana, when it is grown, it has, if you have seen, nowadays maybe some Indian grocery stores will have what is called green chana, haya chana. If you will see it, it's a tiny shell. If that tiny shell and in holy, it is a lot of fun to warm it and sit around the bonfire. Actually, bonfire is nothing but a kind of a degradation of Agni Hotse. So originally we all did Agni Hotse, Holy Purnima, the full moon night, but nowadays it has become Holy Fire. You put some kind of a bonfire. And then they are singing songs, even dancing around. And one more thing they do, like you eat popcorn, they would eat that green chana. And when it is slightly roasted, black, it is very tasty. And that has an original name in Sanskrit, hoya. That hoya became hola. And that's why this holi is also called as hola in Punjab. This is originating from the term that hoya, hola. Or green chana in its like rice is originally paddy. In the same manner, chana is originally hoya. So that hoya roasted is very tasty. If you are in the spring evening and you get some roasted that, you will enjoy it. So that hoya became hola, and that's what gave rise to holy. So there are a lot of interpretations of this term holy. Like the Pauli is very simple. It is a array of Deepak, the Pauli. Very simple term. You have a lot of Diyas, that is what the Pauli is about. But now that has got corrupted. You have a lot of fireworks. <laughs> Instead of Diyas, we have more fireworks. Same thing. Hola is what gave rise to holy, but uh, there is another interpretation. This is a festival where we meet everybody and hug and love each other, affection, you know. We forget about all kinds of things that might have happened in the past year. So you can say your parents can easily explain. Holy means now let us start fresh. So is forget your past. Let's make start our friendship on the new slate. So there are a lot of interpretations why this festival has the name Holi. But the concept you have understood. It's a good festival, very prominent festival and uh, it coincides with new harvest thank you now we can proceed with